get it. All right, so fans showing up here on a rainy Tuesday afternoon. Still, five, uh, you know, 7 p.m. here, 7.15, so might have some other people filter in for that second set even here in the stadium. Some could say that it is the envious waiting room, perhaps. Sure. Well, you know, it's weather's nice on Ilios. That's all I'm saying, so. Yeah, wish I was there right now. Well, I mean, I do I do enjoy casting alongside Well, one day, man, we'll be in the game. We'll have VR. We'll be floating on a pedestal outside of the battleground, giving commentary just above the, the stage. So what we need what we need is actually uh, for the Overwatch League is to take a tour to every location for these maps. That would be just pretty amazing. Theme a stadium after each of them. That'd be pretty fantastic. Got to go to Hanamura during the Cherry Blossoms. <laughs> So as much as Gamsu was teasing on the Arisa, and we'd love to see that, we're not going to be seeing it here on Lighthouse. So there are a few ways you could get booped off the side there. Yeah, they'll still deprive us of that one, but for now the side of Flash Lux is just going to be going with that 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Kisu rocking on that Zen Yada thus far. After playing forward, we'll have to burn out the recall already. Backs off to make sure that he keeps himself safe and away from Vale on the other side of things. Yep, Combox is going to cut the deep out. going to be triple DPSing, more Korean style. New matters, we see it's 1v1, and it's gonna be won by Asher. It comes up with that one. So a one for one so far as they start getting in onto the point, they're gonna try to contest this as Gamsu jumps in. Almost the cap coming through for Flash Lux, and with him kiting out, they do get that first take coming through. Triple DPS here from Conbox with Sleepy Bear coming through. On the soldier, operating on the high ground, almost takes out Kisu, can't quite finish him off at the moment. They had a good position, but they couldn't actually take it. They're gonna need to take it soon, or they're gonna find themselves in a tough squad. It's taking that first cap, it's so important, because you can actually delay for so long to build up holds. Oh, Modern, he goes low, does get taken out at the end, but left up into the air, being Sleepy Bear, could not find that killing blow. Virtue taking out Fleta. So they start poking back in, looking for this cap. They nearly have it at the moment. It's only 26% accrued for the side of Flash Lux. They tried to lay a little bit more veil too late to get in onto the point to stop this one from going through. So it does get handed over. The first swap coming through is Conbox take control. And, and you can both, both sides, a lot of ultimates to use. You can already see the difference in terms of tracer play between Asher and uh, and Veil. It's just better for Asher. And Sleepy Bear was given so much room to work with there on the high ground. So they let the cap go initially, but because he was in such good position, they felt comfortable to re-engage and only losing 27%. So not too bad they're about to match that one right now and still have four ultimates available to defend this one with you know five and six very shortly on the way as Architect nearly has that Dragon Blade ready to go. Sound Barrier in the meantime popped out by Flash Lux. They pick up two swift kills, both supports on the side of Conbox. Have been taken out as Fleta dashed his way through Oparochi. Find a little bit more there with that Dragon Blade usage, but won't come up with too much. See if Architect uh, you know, meets his uh, Dragon Blade here. Not going to drop it, not necessary in fact. They do yeah. reflip, but they want to actually join this together with Architect and Twilight, probably for the combo with Transcendence. You know, they just want to make sure that they have both of their supports there. So, you know, losing out on Twilight and Oparochi right off the start just means, you know what, we'll, we'll go ahead and hand this over. It'll be a very short flip, 44%, all that they were able to get for themselves. And yet again, going to be tied up here. And they start to go back in, but still, plenty of tools to be used here from the side of Conbox Spirit to try to retake this point. But if it falls short, then maybe Flash Lux do come up with that hole. Sure, having to use that recall, Modern comes up onto the high ground, trying to threaten out that Tracer. Having the recall anymore means that he's pretty vulnerable. Get the Primal Rage pop from both sides, Modern. Trying to find the Zenyatta, trying to knock him off the map. Can he get him? He pops the Transcendence, trying to keep himself alive inside the point. As they start to go for that retake, still ticking up here is the side of Flash Luck. 70% of the clock, that's going to be the sound barrier. Coming down here for Conbox Spirit. They just start piling in, desperately trying to get this retake. The clock ticking higher up here for Flash Lux, but now the kill's starting to come through. Three dead on the side of Flash Lux. Only Twilight going down. They find Modern. Just need one more tank to be taken out. self the struck tossed out by Wiso. Not going to find much. Just desperately trying to buy time. As they get closer and closer towards that overtime, he'll get popped up in the back yet again. Should be taken down. That should be a retake from the side of Conbox Spirit. Pretty expensive for Flash Lux. Everything they use there. I mean, quite literally everything they had was used starting off with the Primal Rage, but uh, as you can see, it was more cost efficient in terms of Combox Spirit. They had Architect, they lost him early, which is why they had to use more ults than they would have necessarily had to use, but they didn't use all of them. He's got the Dragon Blade available, and they're gonna wait for another one of these big support ultimates, the Transcendence or the Sound Bearer, to use that to secure this last dig. That's the plan here. Only Fleta with the Dragon Blade, nothing to pair. Eunice will have that Sound Barrier soon. Get that swiftly, that'd be a big one Ooh. for him. Nice dash through there, does find Sleepy Bear. In the meantime, point is getting taken. Nearly re, re grabbed here from the side of Flashlight. Dragon Blade comes through, taken but he just gets taken out. Yeah, the poop comes down. Twilight does fall, but Oparochi is still standing strong for his squad. 
Numbers do go down as Gamsu gets taken out by Kisu. The reca recap has come through. Flash Lux now forcing into overtime. 99% here as Kanbok Spirit has to pile into the point. The poop off there coming through onto Asher means that he can't make it back in. Can't be that massive delay tactic for his squad. Architect buying so much time though and getting so many kills as well. Incredible, he was able to do that basically alone. Yeah, and because of that, that means that Modern just has to back off. Even with the Primal Rage, doesn't want to stick in any longer. They hand this back over. It's 15% left for Kanbok Spirit, but only have the sound barrier for them. There's going to be a Transcendence up for Flash Lux, so double support ultimates on either side. Yeah, there's going to be the Primal Rage for Gamsu as well. It actually helps zone. Good position here already from Sleeper Bears. Uncontested at the moment. Could actually get an attack visor for this last hold. Now, finally, the Tracer comes up to harass him. Not shown on screen. Time coming through. Pulse Bomb ready for Veil. Hasn't tossed it out yet. Looking for a tanky member. You can see that. Primal Rage wins it even with the Discord Orb. Not quite as juicy of a target for him. Twilight gets picked off though, but Kitsu gets answered for by Asher. Comes up with a double kill. Pulse Bomb thrown down by Veil. Strike inside to the point, but doesn't find much for it. And Flash Lux are just getting ripped apart. We so tossing out that self destruct yet oh, again. Asher does find a kill down. in onto Asher, but they need much more than that. The respawn's finally coming through as they start piling back in toward the point, trying to delay as long as they possibly can, but they cannot get it. They get booped out, they get taken down. And the first point, Lighthouse goes over to Conbox. Now we had some really incredible Dragon Blades coming out from Architect, and Fleta had that one that was shut down immediately. It looks like Oparochi has got a bunch of headshots there, and they targeted it down the second he popped it. But that one Dragon Blade where we had Architect basically just sitting on top of the Lighthouse and then jumped down after the D.Va was knocked out of the mech, and just came in there, there was no one to contest him, and he got several kills. That gave them the pretty easy flip. And it was funny because, in a way, a lot of the time, Combat Spirit, they are about to pop their ultimate. Sea Bear's got Tac Visor on the high ground. He was killed several times before he could use it, which at first looked unfortunate, but then they were able to take the point anyways, and then he had it available for the next push. Architect several times, Sleepy Bear as well. So, kind of a funny way that worked out for them. Just ended up winning a lot of fights, even down members, down ultimates. And we swap over here to Well. So it seems like we're gonna have a couple swap ups coming through as Combat Spirit come through with that double tank. So just the 2-2-2 is two, 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 Sleepy Bear moves over onto the D.Va. Pretty much going to be matched on the side here from the from Flash Lux, but still operating with Kisu in onto the Zenyatta. So that's going to be really the only difference that we have as Twilight comes through on that Ana this time around. Kisu, the target once again here for Architect. Not able to get it immediately here. Nice reflect. Ooh. He almost got that right through the doorway. That was a close call. He said sorry to the fans until that, that spray said, but damn, that was pretty impressive. Just hunting down the Zenyatta. Yeah, almost takes him out. One more orb on that deflect than he would have had him taken out. Yet again, still just working down Kisu as much as he possibly can from range. Couple kills coming oh, through. Oh, the prediction football, on the recall, oh. too! Yeah, that dashes. was incredible! That's just straight through and find Bale. Takes him out. That's going to be two members down inside of Flash Lux, which means Conbox can go ahead, posture forward in onto the point. They'll get this first cap coming through for them. Well, let's talk about how important it is to take the first cap. Last time they gave it up without a hooch, but they had the, the positional advantage to retake immediately. Now they can spend so much time. There's so many tools when you have the defense to keep that overtime going, get that 99%, so you usually have the ult lead, and then you can build up six and retake for the, the last cap of the map. So Flash Lux really unfortunate they lost this this easily. They don't have a contest at the moment. If it goes 99, that's a big problem. Yeah, even getting the first blood kill onto Asher just was not enough for them. I mean, time though, Kisu pops that transcendence, and Architect goes down. Bale poking into the sidelines, trying to get in on Oparochi. Finds a pulse bomb going down, doesn't get the stick, so will not finish off Twilight. They get taken down by Modern on the backside of the fight anyway, but they still hold on to the point, even with the kill exchanges coming through. It's in fight coming down, the bubble is there, and Modern taking a lot of damage, has, feels the pressure, has to pop that Primal Rage to try to keep himself alive. Ooh, Liso loses his mech from that self-destruct, though, and Gamsu actually props his Primal Rage much later, much more carefully, as he had the support there. Looks for the pick on the Veil, he fails to get it, but he's doing so much damage right now, and Architect is just cleaning up the pieces. I mean, not only that, but he's also delaying so well. Look how close Flash Lux was for that cap, but they still don't come through it. In the meantime now, Architect popping that Dragon Blade, looking for a kill in on Udus, dashes for it, has that final slash, they take him out, a near wipe on the side of Flash Lux, and Kanbox Spirit holds firm on the point, 70% on the horizon for them, maybe even just 100% at this rate. And with those delayed respawns coming up from Flash Lux, this almost feels like it's a 99 no matter what. Even if Flash Lux pops everything to take it, Combox can just save up for the six and do the one retake. That's why getting that 99%, winning that first cap is so important. They've consistently been able to hold it more efficiently. Gops are just a better Winston. Look at that, another pick on Kisu. This has been a liability for Flash Lux. We talked about it from the beginning, and once again, Asher is just finding and picking him off Architect 2, chasing him down. 
Okay, he does get taken low, so he has to kite back out of there, but that's gonna be the sound barrier from both sides, and Fleta, even with that, gets taken out immediately with the Dragon Blade drawn out. Doesn't get a damn thing done, and he will fall self-destruct. Gets tossed, not gonna find much. Actually finds two! It's almost like as the if barrier he didn't know. was there, but it didn't get it got went down in time, I believe. So actually Weasel comes up with a double kill. Thought for sure that that one was gonna get mitigated by the Winston, but with those picks coming through, crucially the retake comes through for Flashlux as they keep their hopes alive. 5% now. Sure. The 99 of Convox. But they still have a mountain to climb. They have 90% left they're gonna have to build. And that six ult push I was talking about, Convox is building it. Oparochi did use that sound barrier to try to secure the defense. It failed, so that's the one that they don't have, but everything else is going to be ready very soon. In fact, we'll probably see a pulse bomb drop even before then because you can build this so quickly. If they knock Weasel out of the fight, they'll probably commit. That's exactly what Asher is looking for right now is harassing the D.Va or looking for one of the supports. Gonna find both here actually together with Architect. Hasn't tossed it out yet, knows that the Diva is right there with the Defense Matrix to try to absorb it, tosses it out in the end, oh, finds the, the double. double kill! Unis and Kisu both go down, beautiful, just play coming through there from the side of Asher very patiently comes up with those kills but Fleta has something to say for it pops out sleep bear takes him down with a mac as that nano boost comes through in on to Gamsu I mean, remember again Gamsu not having to use this because he had nano boost he didn't actually need this primary so he's got it saved Architect's gonna pop Weasel out that was such a great pulse bomb may win them this round Oparochi gets picked here but it looks like there's nothing they can do here's the recap coming in Overtime yep. ticking down. That's still four dead, waiting for the respawns. Fleta and Weasel, the only ones that can try to delay this one as they pile in, but Fleta already falls. Weasel, can he get there in time? It's going to be a question. Try to fly his way back, in, but won't be able to reach it. So that's just going to be a very swift 2 0 on Ilios as Conbox pick up map number one. Not only did he have an understanding of the timing of the defense matrix there with the double pulse bomb, but he actually came in uh, and threw it at such an angle where the Diva was looking away. It was so beautifully done. And, you know, it's funny to think that the Tracer could actually sometimes pick off the Diva, drop the Diva out of the mech, but also looking for those supports, forces the Diva back, which means that the Diva's... I get it. So I was right. It's 50-50 across the board. I knew it was close. 50-50, man. Dead even. So, here we go, King's Row. Sleepy Bear, don't play with my emotions like this, man. You well, know I want to see that Orisa. We all want to see it. Gamsu teased it last time. I don't yeah, know if we're going to see... I just don't know if we're going to see the Lucio, Torbjorn, Tracer, Reinhardt, uh, Orisa, Sombra Comp or not, though, I, to be honest with you, Achilles. This seems pretty perfect to me. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, you could you could see it, right? I mean, imagine hacks plus double shields of the Ryan. See, and this Orisa. is the new strategy. You actually build your turret all the way back by point B. And then they're just not ready for it. You just hide the Torbjorn the entire time, make them think that they're playing in a 6v5. They get really complacent. And then you surprise them with that sixth player. And they're just like, whoa! Yeah. And I mean, if you're... I thought he disconnected. If you're so good at, at Torbjorn, you can hit the headshots, man. He hits like a truck. So maybe you just surprise him. They're not used to the timing of his uh, of his left. Like, who knows? But uh, for Flash Looks, let's see what they want to run here. They're going to pop Veil onto the Widowmaker. We'll probably stick with it for a little while here, at least to get some information. And that's yeah. probably going to be the 2-2-2 two, two, two afterwards. We're seeing it. We're seeing it pushed further and further. The Widowmaker on this. At first, when we we started seeing it, you know, back in the promotion tournament, it'd be go for that opening shot. You don't find anything. Swap off. But we have been seeing them play a bit more forward, up over towards like movie theater around the statue. Uh, it seems like Vale is just going to be using that classic one hit swap. So it doesn't find anything. We'll just be operating back in over on that tracer. It's going to be Twilight on the Ana here. No surprises, no shockers on the side of uh, Hallbox Spirit here either. Yeah, otherwise it's just going to be the 2 2 2 like we just saw there on Well. So no real swap ups coming through as Flash Lux go in for the push already. But uh, wrapping around from the backside, trying to get some hits in on the Oparochi. Shuriken's not exactly flying straight and true for him though, so he doesn't find too much. Now Bell wrapping around as well, goes low. As he comes to just zapping him to death. Feels like Sleepy Bear is forced to pop his defense matrix way too early sometimes, and so they keep ending up taking a lot of damage to their supports in the back line because he's not there to protect them. He goes really low, but keeps himself alive. And Archer takes a deflect kill again on Dekiso, it looks like. I mean, this just keeps happening. And this may just be a very early cap as they get the dive off, not even having to use any of the ultimate combos. It's a pretty easy first push here. Gombox are holding strong at the moment. It was nearly that first tick coming through for Flash Lux on the push, but they did build up quite a many few ultimates. Modern going to be the you know, furthest one behind at the moment other than Weasel. 
So 70% having that Primal Rage could be very crucial for him. You can see Gomsu at the, at the moment operating at 95. So he's going to have that one ready. Speaking of him, that's going to be the Primal Rage pop there as the Nano Boost does wear off. Fucking too many targets. Does bleep forward here right at the end. Pushing all the way up towards the spawn. Smacks we so pack in towards his team. Try to finish him off. They don't quite get the kill. He should be able to kite back into the point. At least they made him use the Primal Rage this time. He's been pretty much just nano boosting it <laughs> naturally, just vanilla every time. This time, Flashlux will actually have that combo, though, I was talking about with the Dragon Blade, the Sound Barrier, Transcendence. So this could be the big push they're looking for. You see Bale's trying to find an angle to perhaps knock Gomsu out of the fight because he knows he doesn't have Primal Rage. You see, this is actually buying. Conbox a lot of time because they never finished off Weezo. He's at 77% to get back into his mech because he didn't want to go back in, swap off, and swap back onto the D.Va to lose his ultimate charge. So this is actually so much time that Weezo is operating without his mech. Yeah, they so went. there's no push really possible without that for Flash Luck. He'll finally get back in. Has 87%. So you can see why he didn't want to sacrifice it. But really good communication by Conbox to not kill him. They want to do a six-man ult. Okay, here comes Sledge's Dragon Blade. This is the idea, but he's already taken out immediately by Gomsu. And this is a huge, huge issue. Self-destruct is going to get popped. Yeah, they just burn him down. Weasel will go down this time. They don't want to leave him alive for too much longer. They get Kisu right off the back side of that. And suddenly it's a minute and 15 seconds left for Flash Luck to try to finish this push. But Fleta, you know, finding one opening kill, draws at the Dragon Blade. And Gamsu's just sitting there on his tail. So there's just nothing really that they could do. Gamsu's going to have his Primal Rage soon. And all they really have in terms of Initiate is going to be Weasel's self-destruct. He's got it. He's spent so much to oh, get it. Oh, goodbye. See you later, Bale. Oh, it's going to really delay this push, too. He's going to have to use it well. I mean, he wanted it so badly, held it a bit longer. Will it be worth it in the end? And okay, there's the kill on the Architect. This could be an opening with everyone respawn. They might just want to go for it. Even then, I don't know if that's going to be enough. They still have Gomsu. He's nearly at the primal range. They have plenty of time that they can be bought with this sound barriers. It does come down from Oberoji, tossing that one out. Just trying to play flash lugs. Pop their own sound barriers, they start pushing through. Don't have too many DPS ultimates, just fails as they do toss out. Doesn't find the stick, but Modern actually finds Sleepy Bear, knocks him out of the mech, and does take him out. Now Oberoji being threatened on the back side as the Tracer and the Winston go deep oh. to try to finish him off. But Architect finds the double kill, getting rid of both of the supports for Flash Lux, halting this push yet again at one tick. Conbox Spirit looking for that full hold here on point A with just 10 seconds left, still coming up with these kills to delay to get those staggered respawns coming through. They finish off Fleta right at the end. It's going to be a full on pile in from Flash Lux if they can keep their hopes alive. They start jumping through. So Wiso trying. Out of the point already, out of the mech rather, gets taken out. Overtime ticking down as Modern is able to leap forward, but still, just it's so, so hopeless for them. Leaps up, pops that primal rage, trying to keep the hopes alive as long as possible. Fleta going down, Eunice as well. Modern gets taken out, self destruct to zone them off the point if there was anybody there to try to contest it. And Conbox Spirit still just outclassing Flash Lux, come up with that full hold on point A. That self destruct, the last nail in the coffin there. A lot of delay tactics there, as you mentioned, and the commitment to trying to stay alive on the D.Va. And basically, Comic said, sure, keep your baby D.Va. Though really he bought them a lot of time. The Fleta Dragon Blade was not very useful there. And again, it just feels like Gomsu is doing twice as much as Modern. We had that one really good fight where Modern actually waited until the uh, until the bubble was down to actually come in with the self-destruct. but. Even that wasn't enough. Bale did some extra damage with that Pulse Bomb, but with all tools available to them, and they had a lot. They popped the Dragon Blade too early. They came back without it. Just felt like Flash Lux was super disjointed, and despite the, the fact that they had that timeout, that tactical pause to get themselves back together, um, and you know, kind of psyched up, if you will, for this next game, it just feels like there's some nerves here. And it's already a tough opponent like Combox, but just don't feel like they're playing even as well as we saw them play in the promotional tournament. And we keep referencing the promotion tournament because it feels like that's where Flash Lux showed their best play. And the big question is, was it just because the rest of the teams and promotions were weaker? And some would have argued otherwise, but you have to kind of shake your head at it when you see Flash Lux underperforming here. I mean, their, their best hope on paper for finding a victory was against MVP Space in their first game. And that was an 0-3 loss for them. Looked, you know, pretty much completely absent from that. And again, it just came down to Fleta and Vale not able to outclass the likes of Yaki and one fact. And now there's just struggling across the board. Like nobody on the side of Flash Lux is really having too strong of a game. Fleta having a couple moments there with uh, the Genji, you know, getting a couple kills, but then usually gets picked off immediately right after that. So we haven't seen that massive impact Genji performance from him. 
Right now, he's going to be operating in onto that Roadhog, actually. So it's going to be that triple tank coming through from the side of Flash Lux with just Veil on DPS. So Fleta needs to be extremely accurate with these hooks, needs to lock down the DPS members of Convox Spirit if they want to have to. Who's rolling with this, man. Okay, finally. Okay, he's got the barrier up here. They're going to try to look for an angle. Asher is trying to snipe, and Architect is just going to fly behind this triple tank. Vale's not going to be able to do much at all with the Tracer here. They may want to even consider a switch as soon as he dies, because this, this is going to be tough. This man. is one of the most interesting comps that we've seen so far, actually, with just Gomsu coming through with that solo tank. And already, Vale gets taken out. The Helix Rockets from Sleepy Bear finds him, and now Architect firing away from above. This concussive blast does take him out to safety, and Flutter gets taken down by Asher on that. Widowmaker firing away yet again, has that direct shot in onto Keyser. They take him out. 33% all that con box need, and they should be able to get it right here. I mean, this the is just team wipe. It's just going to be Veil dashing, and they can't do a damn thing. I mean, wow, that, uh... <laughs> I don't even I don't even want to try to tell you guys that's real like that's a strat. I mean it, it worked out it really well. It is now. It is now. But look, Vale was the solo DPS. So even if Combox Spirit was really just trying to show fan service, the reality was <laughs> with that push is that Vale couldn't do anything against the the shields coming out from the Orisa, the Pharah in the sky. Fleta's trying to to grab hooks.